Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm going to just start by t talking about three cases uh, in modern slavery. So the first one is about four men from the Czech Republic who came to this country uh, uh, thinking they had work. And when they got here, they were met by someone and their documents, passports were taken away. They were taken somewhere to live in very squalid conditions and they were made to work in a factory and they had to hand over all their earnings to um, a gang master. And when one of them um, objected and said, why well, can't I have my money? He was chained to a radiator, he was beaten and he was burnt with cigarettes. And then there's another case of a young lady called Maya, a British girl who from the ages of 12 to 19 was really very terribly exploited. So they started off by grooming her, getting her to sell drugs, and then she worked up what was a supposed debt, a large debt, and so she was forced into prostitution, sexual exploitation. She had to service up to 30 clients a day. And even when she went away on a school trip with her school friends, her abusers, were, were, she was under such control that she, they even trafficked her to people in the neighbourhood. The third case, a, a Vietnamese boy called Hung, whose family put together $30,000 to pay for him to be brought into this country, illegally, I'm sure. And when he got here, he was forced to work in a cannabis um, farm, cannabis factory, um, he, was, he, he escaped, but then he was recaptured, re-trafficked, um, and um, put into domestic and sexual abuse. Those are three cases, but modern slavery touches all of us. It's all, we, we, come across, we can come across it in our everyday lives, in nail bars, car washes, block paving, and of course in supply chains of goods and services that we buy. So, I was, how did I get interested in this? The Home Office asked me, um, as part of launching a modern slavery strategy, if I would try and figure out how many victims there are of modern slavery in this country. There's a thing called the National Referral Mechanism, which is run by the National Crime Agency, uh, which collates reports from various um, sources of victims of modern slavery. And in 2013, they thought there were 2,744 victims. But modern slavery is a hidden crime. Um, people who are taken into this condition are afraid to tell anyone about it. Um, even if they escape, um, they may not even be identified as victims by those uh, who come across them. And in some cases, they may not even realise themselves that what they were in amounted uh, to slavery. Uh, people, just like other crimes, like domestic abuse, are often ashamed. And in, as in some of the cases I talked about, they may themselves have got into it because of doing something that they shouldn't have done, like the young man from Vietnam. And the other reason, of course, we don't have complete data is that if you put out a call to the police or whoever for data, they don't all answer it. So the data is necessarily incomplete. So there's a whole slew of reasons why 2,744 was not the number at all and why there were considerably more victims. And that was where statistics came into the uh, equation. Let's think of an old... Uh, hidden population problem. Suppose you want to uh, discover how many fish there are in a pond. So one method that was suggested a long time ago was this. You go fishing and you catch, say, 100 fish. Then you mark all those fish in some way and you throw them all back and you let them swim around for a week and then you come fishing again and you catch another 100, and you discover that 20 of the fish that you caught the second time were in the original catch. So you had 100 originally, you, you let them all go, you, you catch another 100, and 20 is the overlap. Well, many of you will have figured out that means that the total in the pond is about 500. 
either your mathematicians or you've done it intuitively. So that's, that's where it comes to. And that's a method, that's a very old method called mark, recapture, or capture, recapture. In the case of modern slavery and the National Crime Agency, the way they get the data is they get lists of victims from different sources. They get victims from, um, say, the police. They get victims from government organisations like the Border Agency, Border Force. They get victims from charities like the Salvation Army and Barnardos. They get victims from uh, the general public. Um, and they get victims from local authorities. So that's five different lists, if you like, of victims. And then what you can do is you, can, you could think of those as fishing in the pond five times. And you can look at all the possible overlaps between those different lists. Um, and you can then fit a mathematical model to it and from that estimate what's called the dark figure, which is the number of cases that don't appear on any lists at all. Well, in order to get the numbers right, I have to read them out. So it turns out that, for example, on the government organisations list, there are 695 cases that don't appear on any other lists at all. Um, if you take the police force and the general public lists, the overlap between those contains 11 cases that aren't on any of the other lists. And there's actually one case which is on four of the lists, local authorities, non-government, police force and government organisations, but not on the general public list. And so on. Uh, there are actually lots, there are 31 different combinations of lists that you can observe, and so you get 31 different totals in each of the possible combinations. And from those, you can estimate the 32nd one, which is the ones that don't appear on any list at all. Well, if you go through all that and fit a mathematical model, which is something that I did, you find that the estimate of the number of victims is not 2,744, but it's between 10 and 13,000 victims. That figure is very important. Why? For two reasons, really. The first reason is, by exposing the size of the problem, it actually concentrated the mind of government, of politicians, of the public, of the police, of everybody on the fact that modern slavery wasn't just a little niche thing that happened to a few people, it's a big and serious issue. It's one that we all have to be concerned about. And this methodology that we've developed, um, we've, we hope to um, apply internationally, other countries are doing similar things. A lot of my work now is about um, rolling out the methods, learning more about them and rolling out the methods so we can use methods like this uh, all over the world and get a much better picture of what's going on. So the first thing is raising consciousness. And the second thing is, of course, making the case for the allocation of resources. And um, that is also very important. It's, is it the number of victims that the National Crime Agency now knows about has gone up every year and it's now quite a lot more than 2,744. Does that mean there are more victims? Or does it mean we're better at finding them? I think it means that we're better at finding them. I was amazed how much attention uh, this work received. It was reported in national newspapers um, and it has had uh, very wide attention indeed. And eventually it all led up to the passing of the Modern Slavery Act 2015. I think one thing I would leave you with as a thought, which is which is this. If you take a topic like climate change, 30 years ago, people knew that there was a problem with climate change, but they didn't really understand anything much about the mechanisms and so on and so on. So we knew it was a problem, but we had to learn a lot more about it. Modern slavery, you know, we thought that we'd abolish slavery 200 years ago or 150 years ago, but of course, this is still with us as a problem. And if we are to address this and if we are to achieve a world where nobody is in the situation of the people I spoke about at the beginning, then we need to learn much more. We need to do much better research. And it's only uh, the, the step I and others have taken is only the first step 
towards getting a much bigger understanding. So I hope I've given you an idea of the way that statistics has made a difference to what is a very, very serious, depressing uh, uh, problem, but one which I hope we can all do our bit to do something about. Thank you.